We're visiting the town of Todi, which is an amazing medieval gem in the heart of Umbria. Todi is an excellent example of your typical Italian hill town with its grand piazza in the center, a major focal point for people to gather at all times of day and on into the evening. Anchored by the cathedral at one end and at the other end of the piazza, we have some important civic buildings, a museum, courthouse, and town hall. It's a grand place for the stroll. In the evening, especially at twilight, the passeggiata, the people come out, walk their dogs, enjoy some conversation with their friends and neighbors. And there are many little pedestrian lanes that extend throughout this town that are great fun to explore. Todi has got a very dramatic setting with its old stone houses packed in pretty snugly in this compact town that makes it a delight to explore on foot. Some of the streets here in Todi, of course, are very steep. After all, it's a hilltop town. And so there are some of these really steep roads. But if you just want to stay in the central piazza area, it's actually quite level at the top because in the ancient days, they did a lot of work for us, a lot of engineering, back to the Roman times, of cutting the top of the hill and flattening it out for their town. Because we are on this hilltop, 400 meters above sea level, we get spectacular views all around 360 degree range in every direction. Rather than suburban sprawl with residential communities covering the landscape, the town is clustered into the dense urban center and surrounded by farmlands, hills, and mountains. The rural landscape is varied and features farms and forests with the presence of houses on the valley bottom and cultivation of different products, especially olive trees. They grow the grapes for the local wines and they grow a lot of corn, the maize for polenta and a variety of crops grown all around in this fertile Umbrian countryside. And it's so pretty. The higher ranges are a typical mosaic landscape that alternate dense forests of oaks with horse chestnuts, and there are some wild truffles. You can also get some dramatic views of sunrise and sunset from different viewpoints around town. That's one advantage of spending a few nights in Todi, taking in the full sweep of day and night and you'll find there are plenty of things to see and do in your visit. Exploring the different neighborhoods, maybe catching street music from a wandering minstrel, visiting museums and churches, and experience the town in the evening when it really seems to come even more alive than during the day. Did I mention food yet? How about fresh pappardelle pasta with wild boar sauce and some robust red local wine to go with it? you will find many excellent restaurants in town. Now, Todi is off the beaten track of tourists. Most people certainly have never heard of Todi, but Italians in the know are quite familiar with this town because it's so beautiful, this preserved medieval village. Located in central Italy's Umbria region next to Tuscany, Todi is one of many towns in this area that are definitely worth visiting. The town of Todi is fairly small, about a kilometer across, just under a mile in the old town, and yet it's big enough to keep you busy exploring it for a couple of days. You'd want to spend at least a full day here, maybe two days, walking around, exploring the little back alleys, enjoying the piazzas, so the attractions of Todi are the city itself, the buildings, the layout, the streets, the people, the lanes, the pedestrian streets, the alleyways, the stonework, the arches. Todi has quite a few of these little pedestrian alleyways. It's very easy to get into these little lanes. You just wander. No cars here, just people walking and residences, apartments lining these little narrow lanes. It's very medieval, very ancient in the street patterns. You don't really need an uh, organized route to go walking on. You don't need step-by-step uh, -step directions. You can get the little map. It's a, a handy map and it shows the three main streets of town 
and gives you indication of the little side lanes. And then just go wander and discover it on your own. You have a number of very ancient arches and uh, many, many medieval arches throughout the city connecting the buildings together, as you can see right here behind me. And then of course there's the specific attractions, the Duomo, the great cathedral here, and the museum, which has a collection of ancient artifacts and statues and arts. So there's something for everybody. There's also a small theater in town, the Municipal Theater, where they have the occasional concert, and you might get lucky to stumble into a performance. So by all means, take advantage if you see there's a concert on, and buy your ticket, go inside and enjoy the show in this delightful Italian-style, old-fashioned theater. There are quite a few students in this little old city. Population is less than 17,000 people, but you are going to run into groups of students in various parts of town. They do have five different secondary schools, including the Bramante you see here and State Agricultural Technical Institute. There's the State Professional Institute for Industry and Crafts and a school for accountants and surveyors. From the few times that I saw the students hanging around together after class, it was really apparent that there's a, a lot of social cohesion here. They don't need social media so much. They've got real social interaction with each other. Kind of that small town feeling where everybody knows each other. They grew up together, which is quite refreshing to see in this age of increasing social alienation and communicating by text and instant messages. Visitors can also take classes here to study Italian. There are several small language schools that you can attend, as I found out when talking to an Australian visitor. How would you describe Toadie? Um, small, friendly, everyone knows each other. It's a very cozy little town, which is lovely. I was in Toadie for two weeks um, to study Italian at the language school. It's a very small language school. I was the only student in my class for the past two weeks. We've been talking at the main piazza, which is a major gathering spot in town, a place where families can set their kids loose sometimes to turn it into a big playground or racetrack. When you're here in the off season, it seems like it's only locals hanging out in the piazza and a tourist with a camera is a bit of a novelty for the kids to put on a little show for. The businesses here cater mostly to local customers and many of them have been in place for a long time, such as this quaint little bookshop that we stepped into with two generations working together. Yeah. And, um, what's, what's your name? Sergio Giuseppe. And? Padre Figlio. Padre Figlio, I see. Piazza del Popolo has been the center of town for 2,000 years. Ever since the Romans first built their town, this was the center, their forum, where everything happened. A place for shopping, eating out, government functions, just like we do today. Directly underneath the paving of this piazza are some incredible ancient Roman remains. It's a huge underground water storage system that's still preserved today called the Roman Cistern and it's open to the public. You can actually walk through them, as we'll show you right now. This is how the ancient Romans maintained a steady water supply for their town. There are 12 large rectangular rooms made of Roman concrete and rock covered by barrel vaults that extend about eight meters high. The rooms are connected by arched passageways. The ancient Romans were unable to build their typical aqueducts to bring water in because Toti stands on the top of an isolated hill, surrounded for miles by lower fields. But they could bring water into these tanks by surface runoff and from some underground wells, which also controlled erosion and stabilized the city. Part of the system remained in use all the way up through the 19th century as a public water reserve. Along with these underground water tanks, there is an additional three kilometers of underground tunnels and galleries dozens of pre-Roman, 
Roman and medieval cisterns, hundreds of wells from various eras. It's like an underground city and you can walk through a lot of it. There are guided tours that you can hook onto that will show you these amazing sights. Twilight is an ideal time to be out walking around. The lighting is very pleasant with the lingering blue sky and you've got lights on. This was filmed in the month of November and so twilight comes rather early, like four o'clock, five o'clock. During the summertime, maybe 10 p.m. when the sun goes down. So of course at that time, the main piazza attracts more and more people, old and young alike. This is a place where families enjoy time together, strolling around, and friends have a conversation, catching up on the day's activities. This is um, Piazza del Popolo, and uh, main square of the, of the city of Todi. On the, all, all the side of the piazza are the uh, palace of the Popolo and the uh, ah. office of the judge. Okay. Uh, These are the main civic buildings in town. They are among the oldest public buildings in Italy. Palazzo dei Priori is a kind of city hall that houses the municipal offices and the magistrate's court. Palazzo del Popolo originally housed the people's gatherings of the communes, like a legislature, while Palazzo del Capitano housed the head of government, like the mayor. Along with these government buildings, the piazza has always been the center of social life in Todi. And then uh, cafes. And yes, Cafe Serrani on, on this side. And the, the people come out every night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this uh, every, hour? every day, every night. A short block further south, you'll find the much smaller Piazza Jacopone. It's a popular gathering spot for young people during the day and right into the evening, perhaps because of the gelato shop here and its central location right in the heart of town. Also, there's a bus stop for local and intercity buses here. Another attraction of this piazza is the four-star Hotel Fonte Cesia, one of the best in town. Its 36 rooms are in a restored ancient building from the 17th century, in a perfect location. We've been visiting Piazza Jacopone and Piazza del Popolo. Now we're going over one block to the main street of town, Corso Cavour, for an evening shopping stroll. This is what you might call downtown Todi. The street is not exactly pedestrian street, but it's pedestrian friendly. Cars do come through, but they drive very slowly in this narrow lane. So it's the perfect place to end your day with a little people watching, maybe get a snack, sit down for some gelato. There's a few restaurants nearby. And there's also intriguing little side lanes that you might want to explore as well. This completes our first look at Todi. We're bringing you another movie that will go into more detail on the little walking lanes. We'll be taking you from one end of town to the other. And we have more videos about the great towns of Umbria, including Spoleto, Perugia, and Gubbio. With more to come soon in our series on Umbria in the green heart of Italy. Look for them in our collection. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.